Next, we will introduce another application of the suppose verify method. In the last lecture, we have introduced the half wave rectification. We will introduce another rectification in this lecture. Its name is a full bridge rectifying circuit. It is called the full bridge because there is a bridge circuit which consists of the source and four diodes. We had a lot of discussions about the bridge circuits before we analyze the circuit. According to the knowledge we have learned in lecture 14, 41, if the circuit can sit containing four nonlinear components and each component with two working areas, then the whole circuit has two to the power of four equals 16 working conditions. It is too complicated if we discuss 16 working conditions one by one. Here we will introduce a special analysis method for the circuits containing the diodes. We call it the current direction supposing method. This is also a subtly used the suppose verify idea. In the analysis of this problem, we assume that four diodes are all ideal diodes. That is to say they are ideal conductors when conducting and ideal open circuits when cutting off. The so-called current direction supposing method is to assume a certain current can flow through a diode and judge the direction of the current. Now we assume that a current can flow like this because D1 can only flow the current with this direction. It will not continue to flow from here because D2 cannot take the reverse current. It must flow in this direction. There are two possible ways when the current flows to here. One is upward here and the other is upward there. This case is impossible because if this is the case, it constitutes a closed loop. It's impossible to have a closed loop only consisting of resistors with a current. So only the only possible way is to flow up from here. Similarly, it can flow upward, otherwise it will constitute a closed current loop only consisting of pure resistors, so the current must flow like this. You can see it constituted a complete closed current loop. So if you want to form a closed current loop, you need a positive current. What can make this a positive current value? I is equal to A times sine omega t over R. This value needs to be greater than zero. In the case that A and R are greater than zero, omega sine omega t needs to be greater than zero. We draw the waveforms of the signal source and the voltage of the load. When sine omega t is greater than zero, we know it is a short circuit line. It is two U equals US. This is it. Then we analyze another situation. Just now, the assumption is that the positive current flows through D1, and so that D4 has a positive current. Now we suppose that there is a positive current flows through D2. Similarly, it can't flow to the left, because D1 can't flow the reverse current. This is not possible, so it must flow to this side. The current is greater than zero and flows through the resistor. Similarly, it can flow upward here. Otherwise, it will constitute a closed current loop only consisting of pure resistors. So I3 must have a positive current. Similarly, it can flow upward here. Otherwise, it also constitutes a closed current loop only consisting of pure resistors. The current needs to be greater than zero. Let's look at it. Now the load connects to the both ends of the source reversely. So I equals minus A sine omega t over R is greater than zero, and its condition is sine omega t is smaller than zero. Look at it. This is wonderful. As we learned before, the disadvantage of the half wave rectifier is that it can provide power 
a signal to the load only when the source is a positive value, but when the source is a negative value, the voltage of the load is zero. Well, in the bridge rectifier circuit, even when the source signal is a negative value, the load can also obtain a positive voltage. That is to say, the voltage waveform of the load is like this. Next, we use the simulation and experiment to verify the previous analysis. By a simulation, we verify the function of the full bridge rectifier circuit. In the circuit, four dials are with a bridge connection. The input is a sinusoidal voltage source, 10 volts, RMS, and 50 Hz. The output is a resistor R1. The input signal connects to channel 1 of the scope, expressed by the blue line. The voltage across the load connects to the channel B of the scope, expressed by the red line. Because the inputs of the dual channel oscilloscope are isolated, the input of channel B can be different from the ground. Open the scope, run, and pause. The blue input signal is a standard sine wave. The red output signal is in agreement with the input signal in the positive half cycle. In the negative half cycle, the output signal is the reverse of the input signal. The output signal is a DC signal with continuous fluctuations. It realizes a function of a full bridge rectification. Now we do a diode bridge rectifier experiment. It can change AC to DC. This is the circuit. The input is AC voltage, and the output is a voltage across the resistor. It is isolated by the op-amp circuit. We can use the scope to observe the waveform of the input and output voltage with or without the capacitor through the controlling switch. You can see the waveform of the input and the output voltage in the case of without the capacitor. The output is a DC with larger fluctuation. Now we connect the capacitor. You can see the waveform of the output is relatively smooth, and it is ideal DC.